Okay, we are at the top of the hour with, a little past the top of the hour, um, with our sixth challenge of the day, an innovation to replace a dreaded chore. But before we have the students come in and present, um, our, our college to, to feature of the, of the hour is the Ivy College of Business. Um, we are also part of the Ivy College of Business, but with us today is Annalena, who teaches entrepreneurship in the Ivy College of Business, complemented by Tom Swartwood from our Papa John Center team to talk about all the opportunities for students in the Ivy College of Business. So Annalena, thank you for joining us. And Annalena will be serving as our judge this afternoon. Okay, hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Annalena Farhangkamnas, and I'm Kingland Professor of Entrepreneurship at Ivy College of Business. I'm super excited to be here today at the Improv uh, Pitch Competition, and I will say a couple of words about the entrepreneurship activities at the Ivy College. The Ivy College at Iowa and Iowa State University um, have been uh, focusing on entrepreneurship for more than 20 years. And actually it was the Ivy College, uh, it was the first public university in Iowa to introduce underprivileged major in entrepreneurship. And we were only the eighth in the country to offer a PhD specialization in entrepreneurship. And all this investment and commitment to entrepreneurship has really paid off. So this year, Iowa State University ranked number 11 for entrepreneurship by Princeton Review Rankings. So currently we are offering a major and minor in entrepreneurship for undergraduates. We offer a graduate certificate in entrepreneurship and we are applying for a master's degree in entrepreneurship. In addition, uh, our college offers a truly interdisciplinary uh, entrepreneurship minor that involves 26 colleges. And we really emphasize and focus on experiential learning. And the Papa John Center that is under the Ivy College uh, offers entrepreneurship learning community, entrepreneurship club, speaker series, summer boot camp, site starter summer accelerator, college by college and innovation pitch and business plan competitions, startup internships, startup co-working events, hackathons, just to uh, mention a couple of examples. And over 3,500 students have participated in these entrepreneurship activities outside of the classroom this year. So next I'm going to hand it over to my awesome colleague, Tom Swartberg, and he's going to talk a little bit more about entrepreneurship at Ivy. Tom, the floor is yours. Thanks, Annalena. So that was a terrific intro. Um, even I forget all the things that we do in support of entrepreneurship and student entrepreneurs. And I was just talking with a young colleague that one of our goals, and I think a primary goal in these academic offerings is not just to foster startups because that's hard and it's not for everybody, but it's to encourage and nurture an entrepreneurial mindset throughout the students in the Ivy College in particular. But I can say from my experience, because of the foundation that Annalena described, I've been invited to speak in uh, the event and retail uh, classrooms run by Linda Neem. I've been in six different sections of computer science, software engineering classes to help them develop more entrepreneurial chops and skills in their classrooms. Uh, Judy and I, Judy is the director of the Papa John Center, have worked with the music department and we're going to try to get that rejuvenated. So we're trying to take this business ethos of entrepreneurship and really focus on the mindset. Uh, and I, in fact, believe that the startups will come behind that, but that an entrepreneurial mindset in this day and age, in this crazy environment in which we live, is critically important. Annalena listed the great programs we have. Uh, a, a recent one that has been extremely popular off campus is the Start Something Serious, Start Something Serious. Um, with subject matter experts on everything from digital marketing to Etsy marketing to uh, technical consulting, where we had colleagues from across campus join us. The Papa John Center is the nexus 
uh, among the academic centers and colleges here on the campus and our rich and growing ecosystem in central Iowa, extending to the other region schools, one of the five public owned centers in the state, which is a unique collaboration in the country, right to all 99 counties through our extension system. It's a great privilege to be at a place with such top down commitment from the president to our dean, to our director, and to these, we have these outstanding people. And I laugh because I was like, oh my God, what am I doing with these people like Annalena, like some of my colleagues with PhDs and who are experts in uh, many of the business disciplines, but have chosen to focus on entrepreneurship. It really is a unique collaboration. And we welcome all of you and we hope you all get involved. There's won't be about me. There's won't be about me. This won't, no. So, Ray, you can stand up here. You're welcome to take your mask off when you present. Sydney's going to give you a two minute timer, and then you'll get two minutes QA. And Arlena is our judge today from the Medical College of Business. Okay, cool. We can start whenever you're ready. It was May 2019, and the passive aggressive dirty dish wars was three weeks in. Dishes were stacked to the ceiling. Not a clean dish was found anywhere in the house. Somebody just had to break down and do the dishes already. And it sure as heck wasn't going to be me. My name is Ray Schmidt, and this is the silent scrubber. Although it looks just like a Tide Pod, drop it in and watch it magically clean all your dishes at once. Now your pre-soak will become your post-soak as you fill up an entire basin full of hot water, submerge your dishes and drop in one of these bad boys and watch as it dissolves all the food from your plates, the liquid from your cups, and even that half a pan of brownies your roommate made two weeks ago and never shared with you. Our patented technology dissolves all of this magically. So by doing this, you save time on dishes, you save friendships, and you may even save lives. Do you have to rinse the dishes afterwards? You don't. It, uh, it dissolves, um, it goes through its own cycle like a dishwasher would. How much will it cost? Um, roughly, each one of these would be about 50 cents a piece with um, buying in bulk and you could buy individual units to test it out as well. Okay, and how long, how long does it take? How long do your dishes have to sit in the- It's an hour long process. Okay. About the same as a dishwasher. Yeah, my dishwasher at home is two and a half hours, so it would save me time on dishwashing, dishwashers as well. And it's environmentally friendly. It is. So uh, all the products are uh, non-GMO, naturally grown, and uh, it can dissolve. Very consumable, unlike a Tide Pod. So um, very safe, very healthy. Is it friendly to your pipes as well? So it's not gonna. Them yeah, so it, it um, we specially made it so it's designed to handle different types of uh, dishware, whether that's glass, porcelain, even plastic. Um, I wouldn't recommend paper plates, though, <laughs> so they might dissolve in the water itself. But yes, for a variety of dish styles. The secret scrubber. Do you have any competition in the market? Uh, I don't have any uh, competition within this given market, but of course there's Don dish soap and there's dishwashers. So it kind of nicely fits between the two, but there would not be um, immediate competition. We would be a, a first mover in that aspect. And who's your target market? Do you have any special segments that you particularly? Uh, my first target market would be college students because I know that's an area of um, household tension. A lot of uh, roommates are actually broken up because of dish conflicts, dish related conflicts. <coughs> so um, go for college students and then expand the market from there. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we, we get them early while they're in college and they become hooked on the brand and then they take it into their later lives, whether they're in a one bedroom apartment and they have nobody to blame for not doing the dishes. And there might be some self-actualization there. 
but uh, moving forward and, and they could be in their married lives and, and also have this ease of disuse. And you don't have to buy a dishwasher, right? No, and so that really works for more urban places that don't have dishwashers and um, smaller apartments. So saving you space as well. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. So awesome. Hi, I'm Isaac Myerholz, and uh, growing up, I've always done the dirty work. Uh, around my family, I would uh, feed all my chickens, and another one of the chores that I was assigned was actually cleaning all the toilet bowls in my house. And while that was great for building character when I was younger, and you won't believe some of the crap I've seen, <laughs> uh, now that we're in the 21st century, I think it's time that we put cleaning toilet bowls behind us. Um, actually, the first flushing toilet bowl was invented in 1596, and since then we've seen really no major innovations. That's almost 400 years without any innovation, while we've seen uh, laundry and dishwashing all come in that time. Um, so I present to you a new innovation in the toilet bowl industry called the troll bowl. Uh, similar to a troll hiding underneath the bridge and only coming out when needed, so does the, or the bowl troll come out only when needed. Um, Basically, I don't see people paying to attach this to their toilet, but I see now in future toilets that are rolled out, they all come with the bowl troll. Um, simply, it's installed at the very back of the bowl, and when you flush, you have the option to also turn on your bowl troll, which will cover the uh, toilet bowl, completely seal it, and then basically uh, spray jets that will completely clean your toilet bowl, similar to like a power wash, having inside your bowl, it's completely sealed. And also there will be uh, an option, kind of like in your top tank, your toilet bowl to put in maybe any essential oils or uh, different fragrances that you choose into a small compartment that will go into your bowl and create it into a fresh and pristine environment. Uh, that is my solution to the toilet bowl problem. Thank you. Yeah, that's certainly a chore that we <laughs> all dislike. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is an attachment or you can just attach it to any toilet bowl or yeah yeah i was thinking like i personally wouldn't pay to buy one right now but i'm like thinking even in america's like top homes like celebrity homes there is like still no solution to clean the toilet which i think is just kind of unacceptable so we need an answer just certainly do <laughs> So how much is it and where are you going to distribute it? And... Yeah, I think I would work directly with toilet bowl manufacturers right now to get it attached and coming with all toilet bowls because if you're choosing between two toilet bowls or toilet, yeah, the whole toilet and one is $50 more than the other and it comes with self-cleaning for the rest of its life, I would definitely choose that. So that's kind of my idea is that it's just simply packaged in with the toilet probably. Okay, so you will have to... Uh, collaborate with a toilet bowl manufacturer. Yeah, yeah, that'd be the dream. And 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 you would think it would be some something like fifty bucks on top yeah. of there. Yeah, that is. That's nice. Okay. Um, not. I I guess I don't want to be too detailed <laughs> about this cleaning of the toilet bowls, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I I'll have to ask this because sometimes you know I I think cleaning up the toilet bowl is not that much of a problem, but I even hate more like uh, cleaning the, the seats and, you know, the under the mm. lid and all of that. So does that solve that problem or is it just for the bowl? It's really just the bowl because it seals up the bowl. But I was thinking it, it can come with, you could like put antibacterial stuff into your, into your dropper and really good smelling stuff. So it covers a few problems in one. <laughs> <laughs> I was really trying to decide if I should make the crap joke or not. 
innovate. <laughs> so, so there's just a button. I'm just trying to figure out how that would work. So yeah, so like similar in, to uh, some toilet bowls have bidets, right? And the buttons like divided into two. It yeah, could be some something similar to that where you either have your bowl troll or you just regular flush, mm -hmm. depending on what you just did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you may have you ever, you know, uh, the Japanese have really uh, advanced and sophisticated mm -hmm. toilets. They have, they don't have this function, but, you know, you can wash your butt, you know, you can analyze, you know, you know what's what's going on with your diet and 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 all of that. So you mm. may want to look into those. Yeah. And add that. Maybe in terms of the technology and collaborate. So. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just think it'd be interesting if you saw it like. As it came together, but then, like, also, like, have an attachment. So yeah. You don't have to, like, buy a whole new toilet just to have it. Like, just, like, put it on the toilet. Yeah. yeah, I'm down for it. So, you have to do Yeah. Yeah, attachment would be handy. So. Coming soon. <laughs> Maybe. <Nice Maybe>. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Professor Annalina from the Idaho Public Business. I can't say it last name properly, so I always mm. say Professor Annalina. Annalina is fine. Um, and Cindy's going to give you a two minute timer. Perfect. You're welcome to remove your mask while you're presenting. And um, start when you're ready, mm. So, growing up, we've always had chores that we dreaded doing. Where it be doing the dishes or throwing the garbage, for me, it's been weeding the garden. No matter how much time I spend weeding the garden, there's always an extra weed I have to pull, and not to mention they always grow back. For me, this innovation I came up with to solve this issue was to create a solar powered robot, like a Roomba vacuum, to weed all, all of the pesky weeds. The robot will, be, uh, will use sensors to see if it runs into something. If the soil underneath the robot it has a bump in it, it'll have a weed whacker wire underneath it to cut the weed and then continue moving. Um, to prevent a cutting bigger plants that we like to keep, whenever the robot hits something, it will hit the root and then turn to, um, to find a different weed to pick. Uh, another thing you can do is with the wheels, you can have them be roughed up. So whenever it drives around the soil, it can rough up the terrain, preventing new weeds from forming. Another issue that I, sound, I, I found with this would be where we have small plants we like to keep that have not yet sprouted their big roots. To solve this issue, we could include um, metal framing around that you can place down around them. So when the robot hits it, it can just rotate and not have to mow it. The biggest, uh, the biggest benefit I see to this is the need, is the time saved weeding the gardens and also the benefit of not having to spray harmful chemicals into the soil. I look forward to having a larger harvest with this innovation. So how much would your robot cost? A current Roomba is very pricey right now. I believe Roomba is going for $500. So anything lower than that, this is of course a garden. You're probably not going to have to, you're not probably going to have the equivalent of $500 with the fruit and vegetables growing in your garden. So it has to be cost effective. So I want to give us a competitive price. Currently, there's no other things like this. I did a brief uh, Google search and there's nothing like this. So I believe in a competitive price of roughly $250 because of all the programming, all the solar power, electrical stuff that goes into it and the, also the engineering of having, of needing to have motors and other things like that, I believe will be roughly between $200, $300 to be a competitive price and also a very profitable price, I would imagine. Yeah, weeding the garden, that's, that's really a tough job. And I think there would be a lot of demand for that. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, as you said, many gardeners would be worried about um, the robot cutting the, you know, the real plant and 
not being able to distinguish between those. Yeah, those so the way I see is kind of the row bar yeah. will have a radius of about a foot uh -huh. and the weed whacker wire will not be longer or mm -hmm. will not be will not have a radius of more than half a foot. Mm -hmm. That means anything under they'll only cut things underneath the robot. So if it hits a root, it can't possibly cut the root because the wire can't reach that far. So that's kind of going to be the solution to not cutting those vital uh, roots that already has sprung. OK. So what about when the plants are younger and they are just growing so it's not, it doesn't miss staying? Yeah, so yeah. kind of the way I address that issue yeah. is that you have these little metal fencing, mm -hmm. kind of if you grew tomato plants, you put those really big ones, they're about three feet tall over it, so the roots mm -hmm. can go through them. You can do the same thing, except have small ones, so then when the robot hits it, the, the sensor detects it, it hits something strong, and then it'll just rotate off of it. Of course, you've got to make sure you correctly set up the fencing, but I mean, there's always going to be room for error, so that's, I see the, the best compromise we can make for that. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just, um, you can just leave it alone doing Yeah, because anything. it's going to be solar powered. You can also probably include a charging mainly for mm -hmm. cloudy days. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, I mean, you can just plug it in and just let it do its thing. And having a simple on button, I mean, it's going to be programmed. There's no mapping you got to do. There's nothing you got to plan out. This kind of does it because it's automated. And I know this is possible because I already previously made this in the class. So this technology exists and it's um, widely accessible. And who would... What would be your target market? Your uh, homeowners, just homeowners, just any homeowners. Yeah, I mean homeowners just want a small garden. They can probably make a bigger one, buy more plants. Or if we want to scale this and make this to bigger farmers, you could possibly make bigger, more industrial grain trimmers, and that's kind of scalability of how far you want to take this. But for now, I think consumers would be the best option. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. That's a cool idea. <laughs> And I can. And you may take that off while you're presenting. Yeah. Awesome. Right. A couple of weeks ago, I was shopping with three of my female friends, and I remember hearing the phrase, "I think he's a summer type. Oh, maybe he's a spring type. I'm not really sure." And I had no idea what they were talking about. Matching your style with your outfit is such a daunting task. Studies show that on average, we spend 15 minutes every day trying to decide what to wear. In that same study, 30% of the people reported being so angry that they would throw clothes across the room because they couldn't decide what they wanted to wear. Is that really a way you wanna start your day? No. Unfortunately, the way that you present yourself is extremely important. Did you know that by wearing glasses, you appear 10% more intelligent and 5% more trustworthy. However, 10% less attractive. <laughs> my name is Seth and I'm a published scientist and I'll be getting my PhD in physics next year. And I wanna look at this from a scientific perspective. What is matching? And is this something that we can apply science to? And the answer is yes. Fashion follows clear patterns that can be written into algorithms that can be, um, receive many variables to create a very customizable um, system for each person. Outfit picking is a balance between this kind of the setting that you want to um, be in. For example, is this an interview? Is this a date? Is this a um, party? What do I wear? And also, or what temperature is it outside? You know, um, and of course about your feelings. Do I, want to convey power and authority today? Do I want to be noticed today? Do I not want to be noticed today? The solution is Entity, an app that can match your features, eye color, face shape, uh, skin tone, body shape, and even personality. The app also contains an API that can access weather. You're presented with several outfits that can swipe through that give you different color inspirations. Uh, it isn't about ordering clothing, it's about matching colors and styles that you already have in your wardrobe, but also giving you inspiration for choices. So in a world where your presentation and appearance is so important, 
Make it so without adding the stress and time by getting Entity, the easy and quick wardrobe app that is based on real science. Thank you. Sorry about the time. I started getting really fast when I realized that. So do you have any questions for me about this? Okay. Okay. Yeah, go for it. So this is an app that picks up clothes for you. Um, so yeah, so it just gives you like inspirations. So or you just, suggestions. Or... Yeah, or suggestions. So like you put in your um, sort of like your settings, like you can mm -hmm. have a swipe of like, what kind of settings is this? Is this formal? Mm -hmm. Is this whatever? And it will give you different suggestions mm -hmm. and colors based off of those the um, feelings that you have or that the setting that you have. So would it, do you also inventory your wardrobe so it could pick up from there? Or? Um, it just, so it's sort of inspiration. So it just okay. gives you these, these um, sort of outfits and colors. Mm -hmm. So you say, okay, these colors go good with this and just gives you different suggestions just to, just for inspiration. And also even like, again, inspiration for purchases. You can say, oh yeah, this goes really well. I need this as part of my outfit. So I should add this. Yes. So how are you going to make money? So we would sell, it would be like, like a dollar a month um, a subscription that you would purchase. I could easily see you, you know, um, some advertising revenue for you, you know, like yeah. interesting, mm -hmm. like outfits or mm -hmm. things to buy. Yeah, like links. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you want to do that. But it's... Who's your competition in the market? So there's, yeah, so I remember, so early this morning I looked through and there's quite a few different um, like style apps, but a lot of them are like, you have to put in all this information about like, um, it's just not very easy to use. And it just takes, a lot of them are also based off of like selling things. So it's like, um, this is a good outfit, buy this outfit, but it doesn't really match it with your complexion. It's not really customized. So this app is based off of the customization and it's based off of what kind of image you wanna portray, not about what looks good on some model or something because that model's not you, right? This is extremely personalized. So uh, the suggestions, are they in visualized form mm -hmm. or is it kind of like just text or how, how you No, know? so it would show like, um, it would have a whole queue, like queue of just different um, different types of tops, for example, different types of bottoms, mm -hmm. and it would show like different ones that would match well with each other, with you, um, like with your complexion and with mm -hmm. the variables that you feed the program or the algorithm. That sounds cool. I guess I don't use that. Entity. Yeah. Entity. Entity. Yes. Um, it was like, I just looked through a bunch of other app names and fashion. And I was like, oh, it just gives me inspiration for something else that was similar in names. Because it was like personalized to you. And I was like, oh, this is similar to Entity. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, can I move this a little bit lower? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah. Sorry, I'm kind of short compared to. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, will it just start on my yeah, word? Sorry. Okay. So hi, my name is Sarah Ng and I absolutely hate mowing the lawn. I don't know about you, but I hate the feeling of pushing the heavy machinery in front of me for hours on end under the hot overbearing sun, feeling all sticky and gross and just altogether nasty. So I introduce to you Alt Systems. Advanced lawn care technology is a new and revolutionary way to take care of your lawn. This business really focuses on cutting and maintaining your lawn via robots. So our mower robot is actually named Ace. Ace is a rechargeable smart robot that works to effectively and quickly cut your grass. 
The thing about ACE is that to use it, you simply put it on the edge of your lawn and let it go, push start. Because of the motion technology and motion sensors inside of ACE, it automatically maps out your lawn so you don't have to do anything specific about that. And after the pilot like test run, it automatically remembers what it has done before. So you can use it again and again. ACE is user-friendly with lots of easy to reach buttons on the top of the robot itself, including an on-off switch and a start switch. It also includes um, an app that actually lets you program things to how you want it. So you can make your lawn match your personality. This includes making different designs in your lawn, such as lines or no lines, if that's what you prefer, as well as how high you want that grass to actually be like. You can also actually track ACE using GPS. So if you decide that you really want to multitask and want to grade papers as well as um, mow the lawn, you can do that. And if you're worried about safety, we've got you covered. Don't worry about that because if anything large or sudden movements goes in front of the robot, it will automatically shut down completely. And the only way to restart that is to manually push the button on top. So there are no accidental restarts and no accidents coming from that perspective. So let's reevaluate lawn care and revolutionize it. Advanced lawn care technology systems. Try the alternate way to create <laughs> beautiful lawns. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I could. I would certainly want to use these. <laughs> you know, I hate mowing the lawn. So, it's it runs with electricity, or is it rechargeable? Or? So it would be um, like a battery sort of thing that you can also like recharge with a porting dock that you would get with the like entire package. So, can you run it if you are away from home? You can just program it, leave it there, and you know, there's a timer and it just goes out when it's supposed to be and then goes back to recharge. Yeah, absolutely. So with the app, you can program it to do basically whatever you want that's like legal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and with the only thing you have to be careful about is making sure that you keep it a safe distance away from like some animals that might be around because it would mm -hmm. stop for that just for safety. How much is it? I don't have an exact cost yet, but I do know that I don't want it, be, it to be too much more than a regular lawnmower because I do believe that this is something that would be really beneficial and I want it to be able for people to use who don't have enough time in the day to do all the things that they want to. So to like gain back those hours that you would lose from mowing the lawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, who's your, you said that you are targeting people who are busy. So do you have any target market because they are in direct competition, like you can hire somebody to do that for you, you know, so what's your special target market who would be especially interested in this type of a... I have so. actually talked to some friends who have like, <clears throat> sorry, pardon me, a couple of acres of like land that is just grass and they said it would be really beneficial because they have minimal trees and minimal like things that would get in the way of that. And mm -hmm. using that, they could just let it run. And instead of mowing for six hours, just have that while they do something else. Right, so maybe people with larger. Um, yeah. Cars. Hopefully eventually like universities might be interested too, because they do have a lot of open space and it would save a lot of um, time. <laughs> so it's just mowing, it's not, Mul is it mulching it or what about you know the at the moment it is only mowing however i have started looking into like seeing if we can bag up those clippings or even yeah. mulching or various other lawn care like things that it can do so i have been looking into it <laughs> wonderful yeah. awesome. okay thank you so much thank you so much you too <laughs> So now Professor Annalia has, has the hard job of, you have oh. to decide, you have to pick one and one person will win $100. So when you have time to collect your thoughts, then we'll have you come up to the microphone and share your winner and maybe some feedback for the students on what you liked in the pitches or what was clever or what, what stood out to you. Um, you can take as much time as you need to. Okay. To make a decision. Okay, that was a tough round. 
Um, so we will announce here the $100 winner in just a second. And I just want to thank all of you for tuning in today. Um, I that's all yours. So thank you so much for these excellent presentations. Um, these were, they were all awesome. And all of these apps oh, and, and, and the products would really make our lives so much easier. So I faced a really difficult task to pick one winner because personally, I would like to give out an award to all presenters. But, you know, and then this was a really hard task. But after a lot of deliberation, I decided that I would go with uh, Sarah Ng uh, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and ACE, uh, the lawnmower application. That was an excellent presentation. I love the product. It would certainly eliminate one of the most hated chores. It was a passionate presentation. And Sarah, you totally convinced me, you know, with your pitch. So congratulations. And thank you for all the presenters. To me, all of you are winners. Thank you so much. So Annalena teaches entrepreneurship in the Ivy College of Business. So sign up for her classes because she's awesome. And uh, that is the end of our pitch events today. So great presentations. We gave away $600 to some students. So they get a little pocket change for their little improv pitch. And we want to thank you all for joining us today. And Annalena, thank you for being here. Well, Appreciate it. Me. Sydney, thank you for timing. And we're, we're a wrap on the day. Innovate that, I'm safe.